That was a fail. Don't do that. Kickstand on a driveway. Mistake! Man, well that'll be the first time I ever dropped my bike. Hopefully the last, jeez. Freaking, don't put your kickstand on on a driveway, I guess. Especially on a windy ass day like this. The wind's blowing hard today. Man, the weather lately just been friggin' horrible. It's been raining and then finally stopped raining and now it's windy. Hey, doggy! What's up, doggy? So I'm on my way to go take a urine test for my new job. I'm pretty stoked about. More bike parts! No, really, I'm gonna probably pay off some bills. Go! Go! And after I get, you know, debt settled, then... Then bike parts! <laughs> let's go, everybody, let's go! Anyway, so yeah, I'm on my way to piss in a cup. And they're gonna find out that I do all kinds of crazy drugs. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've never done anything in my life, so... They're gonna be like, wow! I'm thinking about changing the gearing on my motorcycle. And I did that a lot when I was with a, like a supermoto on my, all of my thumpers. Because when you're on the freeway to those things with stock gearing, like on a dirt bike, you're going to be killing that motor 7,000 RPMs to get up to 60 miles an hour and crap. I want to talk a little about gearing because I think I'm also going to change the gearing a little bit on this bike. Now, for 65, 70 miles an hour, this bike, you know, it does fine. It, you know, it'll go well over 100, but I just feel like I'm not getting the best gas mileage I could possibly get. I can still afford to lose some torque because right now, the way I ride my bike, I barely ever use first gear. So, I think I can adjust accordingly on the gearing to make it to where first gear is usable and I can be in sixth gear and still kind of cruise on the freeway. Because everybody out here likes to do like 80 on the freeway, so to not get run over, you got to keep up that speed. So that being said, I've been getting like 45 miles of the gallon if I keep it like 80 miles an hour for 20 miles, which is what I've been doing. So if I change my gearing a little bit to where I can keep it, instead of 6,000 RPMs in six gear at 80 miles an hour, I can put it down to like five, so change about 1,000 RPMs difference. I'm gonna be saving a lot more gas, and I think that's gonna help first gear be a lot more usable. So I'm not sure what the stock gearing on this, I honestly haven't even looked, but I think it's a 45 in the rear. I'll correct myself if I find out later that it's not, but my thinking is if I do, if I have a 45 in the rear, because I'll just explain how gear ratios work. So you got a front sprocket, which is your counter shaft sprocket, and then you got your rear sprocket that spins your wheel when the chain's driving it. Chain drive! So the sprockets are measured in terms of how many teeth they have. The size of the sprocket varies depending on how many teeth the sprocket has. So most bikes I'd have to say that I've seen have like a 15 tooth counter shaft sprocket. This road's so bumpy. So like I said, yeah, most bikes I've seen have a 15 tooth front sprocket. And the back sprocket usually varies. I mean, on a dirt bike you're gonna find that sometimes they'll have a 13 or 14 tooth front sprocket and a huge back sprocket and that's for all the torque because you're gonna get a bunch of low end torque but the bike will top out at 55 miles an hour. But on street bikes, you're gonna find that the gearing is gonna be a lot lower. You're not gonna have a 55 tooth back sprocket unless you're trying to run like a stunt bike or something. The bigger the front sprocket and the smaller the rear sprocket, you're gonna get more top speed but less low end torque like when you're in the lower gears. So less wheeling capability, more speed. And if you do the opposite of that, where you do a large rear sprocket and a small spr front sprocket, you're going to get a lot of torque, like a friggin', it depends on how big you go obviously, but you're going to get a bunch of torque, but you're going to top out really, really low, like in terms of miles per hour. So <clears throat> right now I believe on this bike, again I'll correct myself when I actually get into changing the gearing, but a 15 front and a 45 rear is what I'm guessing that it is. And what I'm thinking I'm going to do is just leave the front sprocket how it is and maybe come down on the rear sprocket a couple teeth, maybe a 40, 
three or a 42 or something like that. Um, and that's going to put me right where I need to be. Man, these roads suck. <clears throat> that's going to put me right where I need to be at like 80 miles an hour at 5,000 RPMs. And then first gear is going to be usable. Like right now, I'll show you guys like already in second. Like <clears throat> it'll be a lot longer. Like the gearing will be a lot longer. So, and I'll be getting better gas mileage because at 80, 75 miles an hour ish I'll be getting you know 50 60 miles of the gallon instead of 45 which is gonna save money too hence more bike parts more bike parts so I'm thinking I'll change that gearing and then I'll let you guys know how that is after I change the gearing I don't know how long it's gonna be until I do it but seeing as I'll be commuting I will need to be doing that soon so if that makes any sense so again if you got a little front sprocket in a big ass back sprocket then you're gonna have a bunch of torque. The smaller the front sprocket, the more torque you'll get. The bigger the front sprocket, the more speed you're gonna get. And then it's the opposite on the rear to counter with the front sprocket. So the bigger the back sprocket, the more torque you're gonna get. And the smaller the back sprocket, the more speed you're gonna get, but less torque. So if that makes sense. So if you guys feel like your bike is winding out at freaking 60 miles an hour, those of you guys on supermotos and smaller CC bikes with a uh, not necessarily wide transmissions like if you're riding a YZ 450 and you got that supermoto and you're riding a YZ 450 with supermoto trim on the street and it's street legal you're not going to want to keep that gearing you're going to want to change it up to where you make the back sprocket smaller and the front sprocket maybe a tooth or two bigger depending if you have a 13 or 14. When I had a WR 400 I found that my sweet spot in my gearing was a 15 front and a 40 rear it was all around great because you could still pull the front wheel up and you could still, you know, get 65, 70 miles an hour and still be comfortable. And that's on a 400cc, so. The difference in teeth, this is how I always did it. <clears throat> Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. Every tooth on the back sprocket that you come down or up, I say is about 3 miles per hour top speed, roughly. Depending on your bike and there's other equations you can do. But I've always gone by, you know, three miles per hour is what you're going to get. So if you've got a 45 tooth rear sprocket and you leave the front sprocket and you change the 45 rear sprocket to a 46, you're probably going to get three miles per hour less top speed, but you're going to gain that in torque, like in the low end. So, and that goes the same vice versa. So, and then the front sprocket, every tooth you change in the front is going to be like changing three teeth on the rear if that makes sense. That's what I've always gone by. If that doesn't make sense to you, um, ask questions about it, um, and I'll be very happy to explain it to you a little better through uh, my WR400 Supermoto, my DRZ Supermoto that I have, and now this, and all the dirt bikes I had in the past. Uh, I've changed gearing a lot, and it's really helped me out, depending on if I'm riding in the dirt or on the street or pretty much wherever you gotta go. I hope that helps with anybody that needs uh, to change their gearing, as it will help me, and I'll get an update on that when I tell you about what gearing I use on the FZ07 for your FZ07 owners that might want to change your gearing. If you're riding 55, 65 all the time, and you like all that torque, then you don't need to change gearing on this bike, but like if you're like me where you're riding 75 miles per hour most of the time on the freeway, and you're not really in the city a lot, you might want to change your gearing like I do. Or if you're freaking stunting this bike out, you might want to throw a 52 rear sprocket and a 14 on the front, and then you got wheelies in third and fourth gear. So anyway guys, that concludes this episode. <laughs> I gotta get to peeing in this cup and doing my drug test, so. Like I said, any questions, hit me up. Check out these videos while you're at it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, lots more videos to come. And again, thanks for watching. Much appreciated. It keeps me doing what I do. So, catch you guys in the next video. Until next time. Wheelie with that. You shift down and then you rev it up just 1,000 RPMs from 4,000 to 5,000 RPMs. And then let the clutch out. You're not going to have any clutch drag. You're not